What's up guys, Sam here. Welcome back to another video. Today we're gonna to be making a space t-shirt inside of Photoshop. And it's really interesting because I wasn't sure if I like this design or not. However, it received a lot of positive feedback from you guys on Instagram and I had a lot of messages about it asking for a tutorial. So I thought I'd put together one. If you find it useful, please remember to subscribe to the channel and check out some of my other videos. Let's get started. Okay guys, so the first part of this tutorial is basically just to lay down the top half of the text and for the most part we're going to work our way down. I do realise that in this portion I forget to make the loading bar at the top, however we do go back to that later on, so for the most part it's top to bottom. The font we're using for this design is called Wild World, it's a free commercial font and it's a really really nice font to have in your arsenal, I've used it a bunch of times now and it never disappoints, one of my favourites definitely. I'll stick a link in the description below so you can download Wild Weld if you want to and also there will be some links in there for other assets that we use in this tutorial. So right here pretty self explanatory really we're just laying out the font the way we want it and setting a good foundation for the rest of the t-shirt. So I know what colours I wanted to go for roughly in this design however most of the time I won't prepare a colour palette I will just freestyle as I go along because whenever I do use a colour palette before I start designing I always end up changing it so I do normally go in with a rough idea however I don't have it set in stone and I don't have it sitting at the bottom of the page or anything just because I like the freedom of messing around with the colours whenever I want to so that'll change though if a client requests certain colours but you get what I mean. So right here we're going to take out all of the fill from the planet x text and we're going to apply a stroke which is going to give us that outline text. The reason I'm doing this is just because there's quite a lot of words at the top of the t-shirt and I'm trying to make them all a little bit different. It's not a massive deal but I do normally try and apply strokes on the inside of words when I can because normally I've already pre-lined it up and if we apply a stroke to the outside it's going to technically make the word bigger again and we'd have to reline it up again so it's not a massive deal but something to be aware of. So I've got no idea what the shape's called but I've built up a library of weird shapes over time that are just ready to throw into designs whenever I want so I will link these in the description below. This shape in particular seems to be pretty popular in streetwear at the moment so definitely something worth having it in your arsenal and just ready to throw in whenever you want. So once we've got these lined up we can move on to making a planet from scratch. So this is the texture we're going to be using and we're going to create a planet out of this texture. Amazing right? So select your elliptical marquee tool wherever it's hiding in your Photoshop and set the feather to 5. So now we're going to make a perfectly round selection wherever we want it and if we hold shift and alt we can make a perfectly round circle while also dragging it from the center so that will make it a lot easier to get it on point. Once we've got our selection where we want it we're going to go up to filter, distort and then spherize. Once that's loaded in we're going to keep the amount on 100 and the mode on normal. Click OK. So what you're going to see happen is a big bulge appear in the middle of the texture and then if we hold control and click on the thumbnail of the smart filter we can highlight it again and then press control J and we can throw that to the top on its own layer. So now we're left with the sphere portion of the texture that we just made on its own layer ready to make the planet. And we can now get rid of the original texture layer however if you want to hang on to it in case we mess up then that's up to you. So now I'm just going to turn the planet around a bit and play with the positioning basically until I'm happy with it. So now we're going to add a levels adjustment layer and we're going to use this layer to effectively make shadow on the planet. So we want to make the planet look really dark. So we're going to drag the midtone slider right up and I'm not sure what that slider is called but the white one all the way down till the planet looks really dark basically. Now let's click on the thumbnail for level adjustment and head over to brushes and select a soft round brush at 0% hardness and bring the flow down to around 2530. Make sure the brush color is black and then we can effectively remove some of the level adjustment from the planet and that will create the highlights and the shadows. After that I'm just going to play around with the levels adjustment a little bit more and make it even darker. You can really start to see now though that the planet looks a lot more like a planet just by adding some shadows and highlights. The way we've just done that with levels is just a really nice easy way to do it and it looks a lot more natural than trying to paint on highlights and shadows. Now we're going to add a gradient map in between the planet layer and the levels adjustment. By the way make sure the levels adjustment layer and the gradient map are clipped to the planet otherwise it will affect the whole canvas. To do this click in between each layer and hold alt. 
So we're going to use the gradient map to give the planet a nice purpley texture, make it look a bit alien. And I think I'll go with like a deep kind of purple colour for the shadows and then the highlights are left white. Seem to just look quite planety to me. I did just eyeball it though, I didn't end up using the same purple as the text because it was way too light. Next up we're going to add a curves adjustment layer above the levels adjustment and we're going to use this to increase the overall contrast of the planet. What I've done is just put a point in the middle of the graph and I'm making a sort of slight S shape which just helps to increase the overall contrast basically. And now I've gone back to the levels again just to have a play around. Just realized I forgot to clip curves to the planet so I'm just going to do that by clicking in between the layers and holding alt. Now select your ellipse tool and we can now build the ring that goes around the planet. This might take a few attempts but just have a play around until you find a realistic angle and try to imagine that that top part of the ring is behind the planet. Make sure to take all the fill out and add a stroke so we're just left with the outline. And even after we've drawn the ellipse we can still play around and resize it just to make sure that we get it in the right place. It's not going to lose quality or anything because it's technically a vector. Once you're happy with the positioning then add a layer mask to the ellipse layer. Hold control and click on the planet layer. Now come back to the layer mask, select a brush and we can delete the part of the ellipse that would normally be sitting behind the planet. The selection we just made is just going to make it a little bit easier to go right up to the edge. Now we're going to add the neon effect to the ring of the planet by heading to the effects panel and adding a colour overlay first. The colour overlay should be roughly the colour of the actual glow that you want to achieve at the end. Next we're going to add an inner glow because this is going to help make the neon effect look much more realistic. It's going to help to create that kind of white hot spot in the middle of the neon. So bring the opacity all the way up and change the colour to white. Make sure the source is set to centre and the choke is all the way down. And we're just going to play around with the size really until we can kind of see yellow and white together. So it's going to kind of fade out from white into the yellow again. I'm also going to change the contour setting so the jump from white to yellow happens a lot quicker. We're also going to add an outer glow and this is where the effect starts to take shape. Change the colour of the glow to whatever you want. In my case it's going to be a yellow. We're going to change the blend mode to linear dodge and make sure the spread is all the way down. From here all we have to do really is just play with the size until we're happy with it. I also decided to bring the opacity down slightly just to make it look a little bit more realistic. Now to make the glow look even fuller we're going to add a drop shadow. Who would have thought this effect would be so complicated hey but it's worth doing all these steps just to make it look a lot more realistic. So change the colour to something similar to your outer glow and the blend mode to linear dodge again. Change the opacity to 100%, the distance to zero, the spread to zero and the size all the way up. And this is going to help add an extra bit of thickness to the glow. One extra step I'm going to do now which I think looks even cooler is to duplicate the ellipse layer and then play around with the opacity which adds even more thickness to the overall glow. Once I'm happy with that I'm just going to group together everything to do with the planet and label it so it's less confusing to look at. The next part of the design is to add the star background and I found some really cool brushes that I've linked below to make these. All I've done is made a new layer above the background layer and now I'm going to select the top brush and we're just going to print it onto the design basically. Like I said these are free brushes and they're really useful for designs like this so download them and check them out guys. Once the stars are down I'm going to add a layer mask to the stars layer and then invert it by clicking Control I. And then with the layer mask selected we can grab a brush and make sure the colour is white and then we can use that brush to basically bring in the stars again and this technique looks a lot more natural than trying to um, blend the sides in or add a fade around the edge or something like that so give it a go. So 
So like I said at the start of the video, we're just going to have to go up to the top now and make that loading bar. I should have done this at the start, obviously, but I totally forgot about it. <laughs> so select the rectangle tool and make an upright rectangle. Take the fill and make it white and take all the stroke out. Let me just zoom in so you can see it a little bit better. And we're just going to position it a little bit better and then press Ctrl T and right click and click on skew. And now if we grab the top, we can literally, as the name suggests, skew it a little bit. Line the shape up with the rest of the text and then we're just going to duplicate it along. We're going to make most of it yellow and then we're going to leave some light grey or dark grey ones at the end, which kind of make it look like it hasn't loaded all the way. So I've merged all the yellow pieces into one layer and the gray ones into another and going to name them so it's less confusing for everybody. And then we're just going to add a subtle outer glow to the yellow pieces just to make it look kind of realistic and like it is actually a loading bar. So now we're on to the bottom portion of the design and like those purpley star things at the top, this is another shape I've just got in my collection for some reason. Um, as you can see when I add the colour to it that it wouldn't be too hard to build this with the ellipse tool. Um, but I just have it and I thought I haven't used it yet and I just dragged it into the design. It kind of looks like one of those orbit charts so it kind of looked kind of spacey to me so why not? So now we're just going to build the little kind of zoomed in picture portion of the design at the bottom. And to do this, we're just going to make a rectangle, which will force the photo that I use inside of. And then we're going to add a sort of line and a circle. So it kind of looks like it's pointing to a specific point of the planet. There's nothing crazy going on here, guys. We're just literally building it out of the shapes. Now we can bring in the photo I found, I think it was on Pexels and it. I think if we had a gradient map this could pass for the surface of the planet, kind of rocky. Um, so we're going to drag that over the rectangle and force it inside of it by applying a clipping mask by clicking in between the layers and holding alt. I'm then just going to move the photo and the rectangle to the top and we can apply a stroke to the outside. I've just decided that I want the thickness of the stroke on the rectangle to match the line. So we're just going to adjust that quickly. Now we can add a gradient map to the photo and try and make it look legit like this is a photo of the surface of the planet. Remember to clip the gradient map to the photo, otherwise it will affect the whole canvas like we've been doing so far in this tutorial. And I'm going to go with a sort of deep purple for the shadows. The midtones will be a slightly lighter purple and the highlights will be white. And that kind of represents what we can see already on the planet that we've built. The next step is to add some noise to the photo so it makes it look a lot older and kind of, you know, like them kind of bad quality UFO photos that you see. I'm going to now add a levels adjustment layer to the photo and try and make it look a little bit more overexposed and add to that bad quality UFO kind of vibe that we're going with. To finish off this design, I've just found some text about Planet X. That I'm just going to add down the bottom and it helps to give it that kind of street -wary vibe, I guess. After that, it's time to mock it up on a t-shirt and see how it looks. Thanks so much for watching guys, I hope you found some value from this tutorial. If you wouldn't mind subscribing and liking the video if you did find it useful and I'll catch you in my next video. Peace out.